and we're live. Hello, everyone. Tonight, we are going to be... Oh my gosh, I am messing up. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Babies with Knives. I'm your hostess, Alice Peng, and with me tonight is my ever-present and charismatic co-host, co Brandon Powers. Tonight, we're going to be doing a character creation segment for Mutants at Masterminds, third edition, using Hero Labs. This, by the way, is our very first live stream, so let's hope it works. Brandon, why don't you get us started? I have my Hero Labs open for everyone to see. Okay, awesome. Uh, so Mutants and Masterminds it came out of the OGL. It was initially very close to D&D 3rd Edition, and over three editions of Mutants and Masterminds has moved further and further from that. There, if The only die you're going to need is a D20 to play Mutants and Masterminds, and there are two... Okay, there's a concept that you need to understand when making this. I don't know if uh, maybe I had two at one point. But uh, to it's designed for superheroes, and to make it fair, we're going to put that in quotes, but uh, semi-balanced or, you know, you have a clue what's going on uh, as a GM and how to build things. Characters are built on these trade-offs. Uh, you, you're going to have your accuracy, and your damage. And together, they can only add up to X amount. We're going to be playing in a power level 10 game, which is the standard assumption for Mutants and Masterminds. That's going to be where, you know, X-Men characters, Avengers characters are going to be easily found. You can by all means make, and a lot of people have, model a lot of different characters from, like, Justice League or uh, the Celestials and things like that um, from different comics. Uh at a power level of 10, maybe they're not going to be able to, you know, crack a world open with a single punch. But what this is going to mean for our attack and our damage is together, those two numbers can only add up to 20. For our defenses, certain defenses combined will similarly only be able to add up to 20. Um, and that just allows you to have an idea of how much should I buy in and when can I not buy in anymore. Um, so first thing that you start off with, if you want to. Since this is a point-based game, you can really go anywhere that you want. But the first page in the excellent product Hero Lab by uh, Wolf, Wolf Lab, Wolf Lair. Wolf Lab. Oh, Wolf Lair Labs, I think. Yeah, Wolf Lab. Oh, Wolf Lair. Hero Lab. Lone Wolf Development. That's what it is. The Wolf Lair is the website. Yeah. It's uh, wolflayer.com. Uh, they make character creation software for a number of different games, Mutants and Masterminds being one of them. And so the first place that you're going to pop up when you open that, and I'm certain Alice is there right now, is the abilities page. This covers your strength, how strong you are and how hard you hit, your stamina, how resistant you are to damage, as well as how likely you are to shrug off poisons, your agility, which is your ability to move, maneuver, acrobatics, uh, defenses, things like that are based off of agility. Your dexterity, this is more going to be fine motor control for driving, shooting guns, things like that. Fighting is your ability to uh, do well in a fight, both on offense and defense in melee combat. Your intelligence, how smart you are, your awareness is your strength of resolve, as well as your ability to notice things. And then your presence is getting people to like you. Mm -hmm. or listen to you at least. So, Alice, what are you thinking for yours? Um, well, at the moment, I'm still trying to get uh, the link posted onto BWK, so why don't we start with you? <laughs> oh, man. Pressure is on, apparently. Um, well, why don't I just go ahead and uh, try and model Ragnarok in, sure. uh, in Mutants and Masterminds. There's a character that I've been trying to figure out who I should do, and... So Ragnarok's a, a fun guy that hopefully listeners of this are familiar with from the Banff podcast, uh, Superhero Shorts, The Liberty Legion Rises, GM by our very own Alice Peng. Uh, he is a, a dr dog that was uh, involved in an accident. Uh, he was a police dog. The, he was in a warehouse full of this drug called Gene I that was being manufactured there. That's a drug that gives you superpowers for a short period of time. There was an explosion. He got infused with tons and tons of the stuff. And because of that, he has developed powers for presumably ever. We'll see if that holds true or not. He is uh, basically super strong, pretty fast, and really resilient. I am hearing myself back now. Yeah, I apologize for that. I apologize, okay. everyone. I was grabbing the URL. Go ahead, Brandon. So, 
I'm going to go ahead and take a strength of 12 to show that he is really, really strong. Let me grab my Mutants and Masterminds book off the shelf here, theoretically. Here's Handbook. So a strength of 12 is going to give me a damage of value of 12. And like I was saying, your damage and your accuracy can only add up to a total of 20. So it already puts me more on the damage. But it allows me to lift a 100 tons. And so, I have you inputted as 12 on the screen for our viewers already for strength. I thought you were doing yours on that oh, one. Sure. We'll do that one later then. So we'll uh, did you just want me to run through all mine and then you're doing yours? Yeah. I didn't know what the plan was. We can do yours first. All right. Ragnarok is both strong and uh, is both resilient to damage and pretty fast, though not as fast. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with a 12 stamina. That's going to give me a base fortitude of 12 resistant to drugs and such, as well as a base toughness of 12. That is his ability to resist damage itself. Uh, like I was saying, he is able to move pretty fast, so for his agility, his body control, um, which is going to affect his initiative rolls, uh, his ability to dodge range attacks, acrobatics and stealth, and then anything that is gross body movement. Uh, let's go ahead and move that up to an 8 to start with. Dexterity for ranged attacks. Rank doesn't really have a ranged attack. Sleight of hand and vehicle checks, those aren't his bag either. Uh, dexterity for fine control and such. Uh, that's really not anything that he's dealing with. And so we're going to leave dexterity at a zero right now. He, he fumbles around. And in fact, with the fact that he's a dog, he's probably going to have a complication based on that. For his fighting, this is going to determine his attack roll as well as his uh, parry defense, the ability to block while in melee combat. We're just going to move that up to an 8, which is going to be the maximum that he's going to be able to do with that strength of 12. Okay. Um, so to so that I can input it on my end to show people, you have a strength of 12, and then what are your stats again? What's your 12 agility? stamina. Okay, 12 stamina. 8 agility. 8 agility. 8 fighting. 8 fighting. Um, intellect. This is going to be expertise, which is basically any skill that is not specifically called out in Mutants and Masterminds. Investigation, which is clue finding, things like that. He was a police dog, so that's going to be someone important. Technology and treatment. These are, technology is something that's probably pretty foreign to him, and treatment is something that he has done with the healing lick of doom. I don't think that he's, uh, I think he's a little above human intelligence, but he's not a genius or anything like that. So we're going to give him a one intellect. Okay. His awareness is uh, for his will defense, the ability to resist things that are playing on his mind, his insight and his perception, and uh, anything that resolves around revolves around intuition. Let's go ahead and give him four in awareness. Sure, four in awareness. And then the last of these eight stats is our presence. That's deception, intimidation, and persuasion skills. While Rag is definitely intimidating, uh... I don't think that he's all that good at lying to people or necessarily persuading them through logical. He's he's always pretty much trying to convince X Archer that the two of them need to go out on the prowl for some pooch. Uh, and so far that hasn't come up in game. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and leave that one alone there. So my defenses, which are also on this tab, dodge is eight, parry is eight. Um... Why don't we bring that agility down to a six? Okay, agility is going to go down to a six. Rag's a little easier to hit in ranged combat than he is in melee combat. That's going to show by moving that dodge down to a six. Okay. His parry is an eight, so he's really hard to hit in melee. And your presence, um, we stuck with zero, I heard? Yes. Cool. Fortitude is 12. Toughness is 12. The will is four. Let's go ahead and crank that up to a six at that sure. point. Will is up to a six. All uh, right, moving over to skills. So at this point, we have strong, tough, reasonably fast, good at fighting. He's not dumb, and he's kind of intuitive. Sounds so far, good. I think that's a reasonable representation of Ragnarok. What do you think, Alice? I think that's pretty true, and you've spent 88 of 150 possible points so far. Yes. Hi, Rag. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> <Arr>. <laughs> Um, so, in uh, skills, we have 
acrobatics, which is going to be balancing, maneuvering, standing, and tumbling. Before you get to that, you'll see, for anyone watching on the Hero Labs, you'll see some uh, skills are currently grayed out. Those are skills that, are in theory, you're not going to be able to do unless you actually have paid some points into it. So it's going to have a grayed out and a dash. And then there are other ones that uh, assume that you have some basic capability to use without being trained. Go ahead, Brandon. All right. So we have acrobatics, which is going to be a lot of that uh, body movement, balancing, maneuvering, standing, and tumbling, like I was saying. Um, I think Rag's got a little bit of that, but he's not necessarily the greatest at it. So why don't we put two ranks into it? A lot of it's just because he is sure. pretty fast. He's not a, a trained acrobat or anything like that. And now you've got a plus um, eight to it. Yep. Athletics, uh, we're at a plus 12, which is really good. We might come back to that one if we have some points laying around. Close combat, he's already maxed out at a plus 8 for his damage value. Mm -hmm. He is. Deception, once again, he's not I don't deceptive. think he... He, he, when the group's lying to people, Rag flat out tells them what's going on all of a sudden. <laughs> the time. So, um, insight, uh, well, he doesn't understand things. He does notice things pretty well. So let's drop two points into that. Um, okay. In intimidation. Let's go ahead and give him a flat 10. Sure. Because he has a, a power of bark, not bite, yep. which is, uh, there's 10 uh, to intimidate. Big bonuses on that. Um, investigation. Let's go ahead and move him up to like a six, let's say. I'm trying to definitely hold some points back because yeah, I know he's going to have to buy some stuff some later on. Six total or six ranks? Six ranks. Okay, six ranks. Perception. Why don't we go ahead and go with four ranks on? Sure, four ranks. Persuasion. Skip. Ranged combat. Skip. Sleight of hand. Skip. Stealth. Give him uh, two ranks into it. Okay. And insight, you put two ranks, not uh, so that you had a total of six, not six ranks, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Since we switched terminology at one point. Okay. So stealth is two ranks. Technology, that's pretty foreign to him. Mm -hmm. Treatment, I think that he definitely has been he gotten has been a little bit of people. training. Yeah, he's been treating people. And so he why don't we give him... And lick, power of the lick. Yeah, let's go ahead and just give him two ranks in that for a plus three modifier. He's not great at it, and the Healing Lick of Doom was something I stunted mm -hmm. to uh, to get through. Plus, sure. X-Archer's my buddy. So, uh, you, that looks like what we've got on that page. Fourteen. You don't so want to drive spent... a vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> you do not need skill in vehicles to drive a vehicle. You need skill in vehicles not to crash, crash a, a vehicle. vehicle. True. So... Okay, so next page is advantages, but in general, we skip advantages for the moment and go to, to powers first, and then we'll come back to advantages. So let's go to powers next. Okay, so... This is where it's going to start deviating from, uh, for some people who have D20 experience, uh, but not necessarily hero system experience. This is where it's going to start deviating on the complexity. Um, Mutants and Masterminds is very much a mashup of D20, so three D&D uh, &D 3035, Pi, uh, Pathfinder 1, however you want to see it, and uh, an old system called Hero System or similar systems to that. And so if you have those two knowledges, you can combine them into one system, into this, pretty easily. So what do you want me to line you up on your power score? I am looking at the moment. He's got a burrow. I'm just kind of writing some stuff down. He's sure. got a burrowing power. He's got an ability to talk to animals. I'm trying to figure out if that's comprehend or communication. Comprehend. I'm just kind of making a list of things that he does. Mm -hmm. um, concealment, create, damage, dazzle, deflect, duplication, elemental control, elongation, energy absorption, energy aura, energy control, enhanced traits, environment, extra limbs. His tail does not really help him. Um, features, flights, force fields, growth, healing, illusion, immortality. Yes, I need max immortality. Um, yes. Alice is trying to kill me. <laughs> I am not trying to kill you. You have too big of a fan club for Ragnarok for me to ever kill you. I keep seeing everywhere, long live Ragnarok. Uh, he's got a forms. leaping power. 
sleeping. And for those who don't know, Ragnarok is a Belgian Malinois. So for those of you who do have an idea of what that dog is, that dog is pretty much already superpowered before he ends up in a superpower world. He can like jump 32 feet straight across and I've seen videos of him jumping and clearing 11 feet plus. They are redonkulous. So why don't we start building a power? We know you have burrowing, Brandon. Senses, shape shift shrinking. I'm just going through speed. Sure. Getting my list and I'm almost done. Suffocation summon super speed. Sure. I don't remember the difference between speed and super speed off the top of my head. Swimming, teleport, transform variable, and weekend. That's the wonderful thing about Hero System. If you're a little rusty on the character gen, it will forgive you. It'll help. All right. So, for burrowing, let burrowing. me go over there. Yep. So, right. burrowing at power level one, you can burrow through the ground, leaving a tunnel behind you if you choose. You move through soil and sand at a speed rank equal to your burrowing rank, minus five. So <clears throat> burrowing eight, for example, lets you move through the ground at a speed rank three, around 16 miles per hour. Burrowing through hard clay and packed earth reduces speed one additional rank. Burrowing through solid rock reduces it by two additional ranks. The tunnel you leave behind is either permanent or collapses behind you immediately. Your choice when you begin the burrow each tunnel. So I think you have it pretty high since you were burrowing through cement and concrete at one point. Yes. Um, you, so, Alice, uh -huh. what I want you to do, go ahead and set up an array for me, and this would be super movement. Absolutely. Uh, and arrays are the same thing as, like, multi-powers in a lot of games. Uh, and so by doing it this way through Hero Lab, it's going to figure out which one's the most expensive what did you want me to name and it? cost me super movement. Sure. I don't have a an awesome name to start with. And uh, then when you go ahead and pop burrowing, go ahead and name that unstoppable. <laughs> That's what I've got it on my sheet. Okay, um, how many ranks would you like? Um, it's one point per rank. Let's go ahead and let I'd me go to eight, the... Based on the way that I've seen you play it with the other character. That's pretty similar to where I was thinking. I was thinking maybe 10, but what I'm doing is I want to go and see how fast is fast. So on page 11 of the third edition Heroes Handbook, um, also probably the same page in the Deluxe Handbook, uh, they have a wonderful measurements table. And so what this is doing is this first column gives you the rank, how, how much you've gotten it, and then your mass, your time, your distance and your volume. And so if you want to see, you know, how far you can throw something, you look at your strength, Ragnarok's is a 12, he's got 100 tons. And you say, well, how far can I throw, you know, 1600 pounds? So that's a five, you knock five off that and then you look at a distance, 900 feet. It's not gonna necessarily make scientific sense, it's more gonna make comic book logic. So for, um, for your reference, by the way, at Eight ranks in burrowing, unstoppable. You have 16 miles per hour or 250 foot per round. Rounds, one, uh, for those that don't know, rounds in Mutants and Masterminds go by a similar to uh, to its the systems it's modeled after. So roughly around six to eight seconds a round. Depends on your GM, though. Some GMs just prefer to run it in comic book panels anyway. Since it is supposed to be modeling a superhero game and a comic book. So, so six to, every six to eight seconds, you can do 250 foot, basically. So how fast is three dice of super running in supers? Do you know that off the top of your head? I do not, but I can look. Supers, flipping, flipping. It's the one thing about converting over. Running speed. You need to, super oh. running at three Actually, die. I'm 100 miles per hour. So, uh, so to get 100 miles per hour on uh, running speed in this would be speed 6, by the way. And okay, great. It would be 120 miles an hour for speed 6 with 1,800 feet per round. At speed 5, you'd be at 60 miles an hour. <clears throat> so you want at least a speed 6, it seems. 
All right, so yeah, Speed 6. Um, what do you want to name what's, it? Oh, that's Runner's Stride is his super running. Okay, Runner's Stride. Um, for the Burrowing, which is Unstoppable, I'm great with the 8 that you were talking about. Okay. Um, that seems like I should go. Uh, but um, let's actually drop that to 6 and then put Penetrating onto it. Ah, good point. And what that's just going to allow me to do is rip through some super hard materials that might be normally in, considered impervious to burrowing. Um, and so Ragnarok is truly unstoppable in that. Yep. So that means you're only going four miles per hour with a six, uh, 60 feet per round uh, is what penetrating uh, with penetrating at a burrowing six. So that's a bit yeah. more. Anything we can else? look at moving that up then um let's go ahead and grab some leaping sure add leaping to the super movement Ooh. so ragnarok had three dice and leaping's not a main thing that he can do but you know it's definitely something that he is he can do 40 foot high and 80 foot across according to his three dice now that should be very low that should in be mutants a, and masterminds. In mutants and masterminds, that would be roughly a th between three and four dice because at three dice you leap sixty feet, at four dice you leap one hundred and twenty feet. Case so let's go with the there is the doubling every time you rank up. With the the you don't mean dice, you just mean at rank four. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and just go with four. Okay. Four on the leaping. One hundred and twenty feet, um, and at thirty miles per hour. And what would you like to call this? Uh, that is Fence Hopper. Fence Hopper. Okay. So Leaping, Burrowing, and Speed mm -hmm. are the three powers that you grabbed for me there. Yes. Awesome. Uh, then let's go over to Comprehend. This is would be outside of that array. Yep. So array is done. Add a new power. Uh, comprehend. Uh, and this is Doggy Discourse. You can comprehend different sorts of communication. So animals, you can either speak to or comprehend animals. You can ask questions and receive answers, although animals are not any more friendly or cooperative than normal, blah, blah, blah. For two ranks, you can both speak to and understand the speech of animals. So um, we're going to go ahead and take animals with comprehend and then go ahead and give it a flaw uh, that would be dog only. So I think so that's narrow, only going to run me. That's going to be a narrow type. And the narrow type means dogs only. Yep. Then in, uh, in Mutants and Masterminds or in Hero Lab, they have this wonderful thing where you can add Comprehend new... Ed Go on. ahead. It is telling me that it's a comprehend at zero. It should not be at zero. It should be at one. So why is that? Ah, I understand what I did wrong. So I need to make it so that you can speak to and understand... Um, and yeah, just speak to and understand. Now that makes more sense. So animals ability to speak to and understand, no need to write, no need to read. And you have it at two ranks at that point. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, go ahead and cancel out that out. We're going to remake that under a multiple effect. Um, deleting that. Never mind. How do I do this? I'm trying to, I how do you get how do you get skills in? Again, it's been a while since I've had to use this. Um, skills, you do a... Multiple, multiple effects and then an yeah. enhanced trait, I think. Multiple effects. So yeah, go ahead and multiple effects. Sure. Title what that Doggy doing? Discourse. Doggy Discourse, okay. Add a new power, which will be Comprehend. So we add Comprehend. We go to, what do you want to name the doggy discourse, Comprehend? I, I generally don't name anything under because it's all sure. one power. That's true. And we're going to go to animal as the descriptor. Then we're going to go to add new power options, animal speak to and understand. And close. Then the flaw is going to be narrow type, once again, because we are narrowing it down to dogs only. So dogs and that is two points. And then what else do would you like me to add for you? Go ahead and add another power of enhanced trait. Sure. Enhanced trait. There it is. Okay. 
What would you like to add um, here? Go ahead and add new extras or flaws and make that similarly. It'll be a custom um, for dogs only. Okay. Is it going to be the custom at one slash R or the custom flat? One per rank. Yep. Okay. So one per rank. Add. And then dogs only. And then go ahead and give him a persuasion of, let's say, 12 under the add new traits. Sure. And therefore, Ragnarok, when he's talking with a dog, they're more likely to care what he's saying rather than with humans. Persuasion. He speaks their language, literally. Yep. So you want 10 in persuasion? Uh, 12, because that would 12. come out to an even three points spent. That's true. Dogs. Beautiful. Doggy discourse added. Awesome. Uh, his normal intimidation carries over, and mm -hmm. he's still not good at lying with dogs. Unless it's good. laying with dogs. <laughs> he can lay down with them. But he'll wake up with their fleas. Um, so for Didn't movement, I wrote get down... get to a flea collar yet? <laughs> they, they give me the drops between the shoulder blades because I keep ripping the flea collars off. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good note for, for movement, the I don't see anything that uh, screams out that I need it right now. So I'm going to keep on trucking. Okay. Go over to quickness. And I think this just allows me to do things faster in general. Uh, you can perform routine tasks. Anything that can be done as a routine check. That's basically taking 10 in Mutants and Masterminds. Mm -hmm. Fast, perhaps very fast. Subtract your effect rank from the normal time. So if you have quickness one, basically tasks take half the time. Um, and so, yeah, let's just go ahead and give me a, a quickness of one. Basically, if Ragnarok's set in his mind is something that's, you know, a pretty easy thing. What would you like me he, to call it? This is a little bit new. Um, so, um, do you have any good ideas? Because you, you're generally full of them. Uh, fleet-footed? Uh, sure. Definitely don't make it flea-footed. That's something totally different. And so, why I get the drops. <laughs> yep. So fleet footed named. Uh, super speed, I think, is not a power itself, but a power construct. I am looking for that. Summon super speed. Yeah, that's some other stuff which I don't necessarily need. Uh, so let's go over to senses. And senses in a lot of games get so very difficult. We're What's going up? to add, for senses, we're going to add either a, um, a white array or another array. Which one did you want me to do? Uh, no, just open senses up. Okay, sure. Then we're gonna senses allows you to, it's similar to comprehend that you'll get a lot of different uh, oh, options. Oh, yeah, that's right. Take. Sorry, haven't made a character in this in a little while. Senses. So... I've got senses open. How many ranks are we doing in senses, and what all are we putting into senses, and what are we naming it? Uh, this is, as you should well know, ultrasonic hearing, subsonic smell. <laughs> ultrasonic hearing, subsonic smell. <clears throat> um, and so for senses, they, there are lots of different ways that you can uh, build up your sense to truly get what you exactly want in Mutants and Masterminds. Um, I would say that he needs accurate for both hearing and smell. For hearing, let's see. Light vision, ultra hearing. Yeah. So those should just be for one sense each. Yeah, accurate for each sense. So hearing and smell are the two senses we're taking. It's yep. costing you two, It's costing you four points so far. Yep. Um, you can sense fine details about anything you can detect with a particular sense, allowing you to distinguish between and identify different subjects. Oh, and so what accurate does is that it's basically a targeting sense. That Ragnarok yeah. can use smell or to hearing. To, right. to find things. Rather than saying, I know that something is in the room, you can say, I know that this person is standing there in the room. So in D&D, &D, it would be blind sight because you literally know where that guy is standing based on that smell. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and take acute for his olfactory. Sure. Acute for olfactory. And auditory is naturally acute. And that's the ability to determine one thing is different than another. Um, if you did not, uh, people who go blind or, you know, are going blind or who lose their glasses, their vision is no longer acute. They can see something's there. It's accurate, but they don't really figure out until something gets really close. Who's who? Mm -hmm. um, Any flaws analytic or advantages on the, these? Or are we no, not so far. Okay. Analytical, um, he's not able to determine how much percentage of water you are by smelling you or anything like that. So probably not that. Awareness, um, sense particular to scriptures. This is going to be like uh, Dr. Strange has some sort of cosmic senses. Uh, communication link counters concealment. Um, both those would be effective. Counters illusion, no. Danger sense, no. Dark vision, detect. Direction sense. Distance sense. Extended. So for his olfactory, we'd probably want to put extended onto that. Okay. So we want new... Hold on, you, you're still in senses, right? Yes, but I need to find a new descriptor or new... Uh, no, not new descriptor. I need to add a new advantage, right? Or a new extra? No, you're still in that same exact list. Add new power options. Oh, my bad. I didn't I've never left that list. Extended. Yep. Add. So you want that for your... Olfactory. Olfactory. Okay. And um, you want it just at one? Yeah. Okay. One should be fine. Um, basically, that means that increased by a factor of 10. So basically, he smells... Well, let's go ahead and crank it up to, to two, right? Yeah, I think you want two, because two makes it the way that you've been playing him, I feel. Oh, one rank is neg one two per 100 feet. That seems accurate for his smell. Okay, sure. He's not at 1,000 feet uh, okay. for a neg one. Um, and the why don't we put that on the hearing as well? Sure. So add, extended. And we're going to do hearing. Bingo, there you go. Give him low light vision. Low light vision, added. Ranged, which would be for his sense of smell. Okay. That he does literally smell at range. Right. What else? Um, tracking. Let's go ahead and give that to his sense of smell. Okay. Tracking. We're going to put tracking to your sense of smell. And range, do you want it for your what again? Sense of smell. Okay. Auditory is naturally arranged. Right. Tracking, do you want one at one? Yeah, one seems about where you... That I move at half speed while yeah. I'm sniffing something. That yeah. sounds fair. Anything and else? And then ultra hearing. Ultra hearing. Uh, as, as the power says, ultrasonic hearing. Subsonic smell. Ultra That's hearing. right. Um, as for the flaws or anything like that. I don't really think that any advantages or flaws apply to that. How are my points doing at this moment? You currently have uh, spent 141 points of your 150, so you have nine points left. We need awesome. to get to some complications soon. <laughs> well, complications don't give you points back. No, no, no. I, one, mean, but... I mean disadvantages, sorry. Been jumping a lot of terminologies and systems. You need. We need to maybe uh, tweak some of these things to give you some flaws into some of the powers to give you a few points back. Well, I think that a lot of that is uh, is pretty accurate on what he can do. That's um, true. And uh, advantages, which are kind of like feats from uh, a standard third, third edition viewpoint, do not cost very much, but do give you a lot of option. That's true. So, um, going. let's go over to advantages, because the last thing that I might take in powers doesn't cost all that much. Um, go ahead. I'm looking at a list of them. Turning on the AC also. Let's go ahead and grab power attack and all out attack. Awesome ones. Oh, yes. 
Um, oh yeah, they hyphenate the all out. There it is. Okay. Uh, give him fast grab. Okay. These are all very in character for what you've been playing. Improved hold. Okay. Did you have something? Improved in knit. You will go really freaking fast. You are almost by, always at the top. Hmm? By all means, that is something that I'm definitely thinking about. So I'm grabbing improved in knit for you for the moment. We can drop it if you're unable to afford it. Extraordinary effort. Ah, yes, that's a great one. Fearless, great endurance. You were... Okay. Um, fearless and great endurance. Interpose. You definitely have interpose. And I, you are I at regularly... 150. At 150, I'm mm -hmm. going Broke. through... Ooh, should I be attractive? Well, I might short a point here or there, you know. Mm -hmm. We're going to then tweak and show how that works. Oh, tracking. Uh, use perception to follow tracks. I bought a power that does tracking, and so I guess I yes. already get to do that with that power. Uh, yes, with you can. my perception because of uh, smell. Yes. Um, and, yeah, so, I, you know, I can by all means tweak, but I do think that that's a, that's a pretty accurate representation of Ragnarok. Why don't you I think go you would also have days intimidation because you have definitely done that i definitely thought about uh that one there were a couple others in the advantages and i guess you did buy me the improved in it mm -hmm. uh already and uh fascinate intimidation you've also done that uh fascinate not so much as i remember because fascinate i thought that you had to uh be outside of combat um and i thought that you could use it in combat let me check um well, let me read it out loud to our viewers. Skill. Your intimidation skill is so effective you can capture and hold others' attention with it. You are subject to the normal guidelines for interaction skills. So that's I, uh, and combat or other immediate dangers make that uh, make this in advantage ineffective. So you're correct. Um, take a so days is what I have. Um, and it's yeah. just like uh, I was looking at uh, if, if my points worked out, I was looking at taking an affliction to represent the the barking and such, so but... We're going to take days for now. You're one point over, but we can go mess around with things. And we should definitely show them how some... Uh, taking some flaws on a power would make something uh, deeper. I think that you'll do that for us. That's true. That's true. I so, that. um, for... There is one other thing that we do have to do. Uh, and that is complications for Ragnarok. Complications. Uh, every hero in Mutants and Masterminds has to have two complications at least, and you can take more. These don't give you any points back, but when your complications pop up and make your life difficult, you get more hero points. You naturally start the game with one hero point each session. So, one of those complications has, has to, to be, be a motivation. motivation. And what is Ragnarok's motivation, Alice? Justice! That's right. That's what Dragnarok is all about. He, he's, you know, we adopted a kid. He was like, I'm not against it. I just but don't care. They aren't going to help me bring justice. And and some a bad guy got away, and you were very, uh, you did not want to leave a, a, an exploding warehouse. Yes. And so what I've got written on my on my sheet in supers is punish the guilty, but by all means, motivation justice is mm -hmm. uh, is a very appropriate one. Ragnarok also has a a weakness to something. Do you remember what that is, Alice? Mm, not off the top of my head right now. Sonic attacks. Oh yes, Sonic attacks. Which he was almost forced to uh, to deal with, but he he knocked that person away from the Liberty Bell uh, too too fast. 
Uh, actually, you did deal with it once because I blew you back with the Black Knight because he was screaming, doing a banshee scream, and he pushed you back further uh, and kept you from. He doing never it. attacked me. I don't think he. Oh, that's. True. I kept waiting for it, but he ignored me no matter how much I tried to get him to come after me. He, uh, he had his job. Ragnarok suffers from prejudice, which uh, is based on him being a dog. Yes, he does have a. Uh, does definitely have prejudice against humans. No. He, Ragnarok's oh. not prejudiced against humans. Humans okay. are prejudiced against him. Sure. Suffers from prejudice, sure. Yes. Um, then he's uh, on his sheet here. He also goes into a rage, which I am looking for. Identity. Mm. Obsession. I don't see a rage, but there's always the ability to add custom. There is, by all means. So, yeah. Um, certain things just set you off. Temper is what it is. And that's for Genai exposure. If Ragnarok's exposed to any more of the drug that gave him superpowers, mm -hmm. it, it basically makes him Hulk out. Uh, I, I'm blown away that we're this many issues in, and Alice has not decided that Ragnarok should defeat the rest of the team. Um I was getting to that. That was supposed to be last week. I literally had it written in, and uh, dumb people decided not to show. Um, not that I'm being, being prejudiced against certain people right now or anything, but uh, anyways. I And the last thing he has is a disability. And his disability is that he is a dog. There well, are certain things that he just cannot do. Well, I'm also trying to figure out right now whether he has a hatred for someone right now or an enemy. I think that you have kind of a bridge between both, but you kind of have a thing about trying to track down ex-girlfriend. No, I, I, I don't. Like, okay. she's she's on the list with the rest of the criminals. <laughs> sure. I'm just worried about ex-archer and uh, any women that he might pick up, that they're going to be the next supervillain. <laughs> sure. And so that's that's Ragnarok, uh, I think, for Mutants and Masterminds. I, I put part of him together as we were going, but once we got to Powers, I gave up on trying to keep up as well as uh, direct what I was choosing okay. at the same time. So I'm going to look forward to seeing that uh, Mutants and Masterminds uh, file up. Yep, I'm going to save that right now into Dropbox for you. And I'm going to actually drop it onto a different screen. I'm going to drop it into Dropbox for you right this moment. And you can go and grab that. And keep that, by the way, because we have been talking about possibly doing other systems for the, um, for the campaign transferring. So we might be using that. We'll just need you to tweak to get rid of that one point overspenders. So, uh, we'd have no experience, apparently. Oh, well, I guess we would, yeah, you guys would have some experience. I also that. realized one thing that, uh, or possibly two, depending on how his investigation plays yeah. out, but his academia of knowledgeable, not factual, mm -hmm. uh, was not on there, and his streetwise. But those are things, and they would both be under expertises uh, that I could easily get in uh, and tweak my points a little bit. What about for you, Alice? What are we What are we looking at? And am I putting yours up, or are you going to be able to do both jobs here? Well, um, I am wondering about that right now because I want people to be able to see it. So why don't I come in and share my screen? How do I get that done? Oh, don't worry about it. I can do both jobs. I Fine. can do both jobs. The reason being is that I've already got this showing as that extra big thing that I showed you I was doing, and I won't be able to do that without significant changes to the current scene. So gotcha, in gotcha. the future, if you want to do that, I can certainly set up two scenes so I can switch between scenes when that happens, and we will work on that another time. Right now, let's go back. And I am uncertain. I'm thinking about modeling an existing character um, and because that would just be a little bit quicker. And so I'm trying to figure out. I think that maybe... I mean, I think that um, I, I can agree with you, but, you know, for Ragnarok, part of what slowed me down is that I was like, oh, what powers does he have? And so I think that that can come back and slow it down a little bit. But if you don't have a strong uh, an idea... 
I had too many, and I was like, well, no, no, I don't want to do that one. I don't want that one. I was just kind of going through a list. Okay. Well, then let me start with a fresh one. Um, let me go and just look at my scribbles, see if I come up with anything really quick. Sorry, I moved things around. Oh, actually, let's make bubbles. I'm I'm afraid uh, uh, that I remember this. <laughs> okay, uh, so tell us about bubbles, there, Alice. Actually, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't make bubbles. <laughs> nope, too late. You picked. <laughs> well, see, bubbles comes from a cartoon Brandon got me to randomly watch so i started putting the villains in the mo in the tv show down as possible superheroes when reskinned i'm sorry for the laughing but uh this is inspired by miraculous ladybug and it is inspired by bubbler that's awesome uh they they the show is uh formulaic to a fault, fault yes. but they they have, they have cool awesome ideas and it's a it's a fun time. So I thought I could make bubbles. Okay, so bubbles. Let's run down the abilities. Okay, I would say bubbles has presence. Um, I would say she would have. Let's put her at an eight presence. I don't think she has much above a human strength. I'm going to leave strength at flat. Agility, she. Slightly over human, so I'm going to go with two. Um, fighting. Well, most of my fighting is going to be done through powers, but. Um, be at range yeah, from I'm your bubbles? Yeah, I'm be at range with my bubbles. So I'm going to leave fighting at nothing right now. I'm going to put my awareness up to at least a four. And I'm going to put my. I'm going to put my dexterity up to two as well. Stamina, I would say I'm going to put it up to two. And int, I would leave at base. At okay. The so, right, 36 points spent. Yep. So right now, that means my defenses are very bad. We'll get back to that. Unlike Ragnarok, who, because he invested heavily in the abilities, his defenses were pretty solid to start with. Right. So... I'm going to jump to skills right now. We'll get back to uh, my abilities and defenses later. Um, uh, an important note in when you're making characters, go to what's important to your character. If you are uh, want to make a skill-based character, go to skill, go do your abilities because those are going to influence your skills, but then go exactly. to skills, you know, jump to, if you're the power-based character and you really want to get your powers, put those down, figure out where you're going to be happy with those and then start filling in because you're going to be, trying to probably cut corners on the stuff that isn't as important to yep. you. And the truth is, I'm probably going to be a power-based character, so I am going to go to powers next. Okay. So, I have absolutely no conceptual idea of where I'm going with this, but let's go for it. So, what do Bubbles Bubbles do? Bubbles Bubbles are able to levitate enemies and basically damage enemies, in my opinion. Uh, so, I'm able to use bubbles to entangle, to damage, and to throw away. So it would be uh, it would be a throw attack, I think. So okay. we're going to go with sorry, go ahead, Brandon. So that sounds like an array. Yes, exactly. I am starting with now, array. Is this array used through a focus? Uh yes, it would be through a bubble blower. Okay, and is that bubble blower easily disarmed, or do you, like, have a backpack your bubble blower is attached to? Uh, it is removable because it is on a backpack, but it is not actually easily pulled out of my hands. Okay. So Like, you I might get disarmed, but it's still attached to the backpack, so you yes, grab exactly. it Yes, exactly. So, because of that, I get to take a flaw called removable, and that gives me some points back. So, um, I will not... Give, I will not make it indestructible. I would say Bubbles Bubbler can be destroyed and needs fixing. Yeah. Even Thor's Hammer Mjolnir was not indestructible. We exactly. Saw. So, I'm going to... Ooh, what does Air Bubble do? Oh, yeah. That's what... Well, Air Bubble certainly does work. Um, so, I will actually take Air Bubble. So, 
So what I did, just so you know, when I was looking, I went and clicked off Cosmic Gadget Guide, Hero Handbook, and Power Profiles just to make certain that I could get to more what I was looking for mm. a little easier. I don't know if you want to do the same or not. No, not going to be worthwhile for me right now. I'm gonna so, go. you have an affliction. Yes. And in Mutants and Masterminds, afflictions are fantastic because they bring all sorts of different things. Do I want to stun somebody with electricity? Do I want to trap them in a bubble? Do I want to trap them in ice? Do I want to mind control them? All this stuff. And they bring it into a semi-universal system based on stages. And so to trap somebody in a bubble, as Al said, an entangle or an ensnare, would be done through affliction. I'm calling it Bubble Boy. So, I'm going to put that up to rank... Well, let's go to rank are, you an, are you an accurate character, a damaged character, or uh, uh, you know, a, a mix? Uh, a uh, balanced character, basically. I think I'm going to be accurate. Okay. So then... Yeah, accurate sounds good. Alright, so that's probably going to be like an 8 if you want a 2 point shift, yeah, I'm or 9 if you just shift. want a 1 point shift, which... Well, DC 18 is pretty low, um, so I'm going to go with a 1 point shift and go to rank 9. Okay. So, first one, um, so first degree, I am going to choose them to be dazed. Second degree, I am going to choose them to be defenseless. Third degree, I am going to choose them to be paralyzed. And it is going to be resisted by will. No. Um, yeah, I'm going to say it's resisted by will. Isn't it more resisted by dodge? Yeah, because true. You're, so, so um, you're you would to want to come into... Change Go ahead. extras and flaws and alternate... Alternate resistances, dodge. There we go. Add and close. And bingo. Now, do you want to have more effects on them uh, for for each of these? Because dazed is uh, that they only get I a like standard have, action. Yeah, I like to have extra. So, um, so go in and grab extra condition. Yes, I did that. So I'm going to do dazed and hindered. For the first rank, then defenseless and disabled for the second rank. Um, actually, yeah. And third rank would be paralyzed and. Well, you didn't want to make them immobile or something, or stunned, perhaps. Yeah, I'll make it mobile, defenseless and immobile. That sounds better. And then the last one would be controlled and paralyzed. Controlled is going to be mind control type stuff. Yeah, so. that's true. Um, see, I, I'm unaware maybe, or inc nah, just incapacitated. That sounds fine. Incapacitated works great. And I'm going to say d dazed and fatigued would be the first degree instead, because they're trying to get out of the bubble. So... That sounds good. Bubble Boy is done on bubbles. Then, what else are we going to do? Uh, we are going to do... So you mentioned a damage attack. Yes, so this would be a bubble blast. So we go to blast, and we create a blast attack. So... Oh, da, 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 da. Um... I'm not sure that it would be considered an air blast. I think that we might just want to do blast and sh reshape it to it being bubbles. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep, bubble bullets. So we're going to call this bubble bullets. Oh, I thought it was bubble blast. No, I'm going to call it bubble bullets because part of blast is includes projectiles like guns, bullets, and mm -hmm. arrows. So I'm going to say bubble bullets. And we are going to... We're going to increase the range a little bit to two. Um, extras and flaws. So the range is already pretty strong in Mutants and Masterminds. That's it's true. generally, it is. It's you know, long. a very range uh, favorable. It's 225 feet at rank nine on a power. Yeah, I'm going to go with accurate one. 
on this one. Actually, well, no, I'm going to skip the accurate. <clears throat> I'm skipping the accurate because I'm going to buy accuracy as a whole for the whole thing. So let's go to nine. So bubble bullets is a damage nine. And uh, what about multi-attack on this? Ooh, I didn't think about multi-attack. Thank you for for giving me that. Mm, excuse me. Um, that sounds like a great idea, Brandon. And multi-attack, I think, on the Bubble Boy Affliction could could work, but it could also be that there's just one big bubble that fires out. But uh, multi-attack allows you to attack one person a lot or attack multiple targets or even use it as a uh, covering fire. I'm going to go uh, and... with multi-attack on the other one as well, because the way that it's pictured, I think that uh, bubbles would be fun having lots of bubbles. Uh, if you're going to have bubbles, I mean, don't, bubbles. don't we need yeah. lots, lots of, of bubbles? bubbles? Lots of bubbles. That sounds good. Oh, I also um, wanted to do this because I've been really obsessed with wanting to watch The Prisoner again. And, you know, there are very dangerous bubbles in that show as well. Alice, uh, on your bubble, I think, yes, you need to put increased range because Affliction is not... Standardly oh, yeah. a range power. Thank you power. for the reminder. So, increased range. As I'm certain that you're not just blowing a bubble point blank. Correct. So, increased range. And I don't need two. I just need an increased range one, as I recall. Um, yes. Cool. So, we're good. So, I've got, at this point, air bubble allows me to have you know, air bubble immunity because we get people inside a bubble and not have issues. Um, so that's a good part of it. And then we have bubble bullets and we have bubble boy. And actually I'm going to name, instead of bubble boy, I'm going to name bubble buoy. I'm going to name it a bubble buoy. Ooh, I like that better. So a bubble buoy, we put, stick somebody in the bubble buoy and throw them away. Um, speaking of which, I need a throw attack. So that's going to be a move object, I believe, is what it's called. Yeah, maybe. I believe you're correct. So, move object. There it is. There's my move object. Okay. So, float away. I'm going to call it float away. So my float away is going to be... It's not, it's not going to be bubble buoyancy? Ooh, I like that. Bubble buoyancy. <clears throat> and I feel like I just spelled buoyancy wrong. Because, yeah, I did. B-U-O-Y-A-N-C-Y, right? No. Um, I think it's B B U. Uh, I'll go double check because I that's bugging me now. Yeah, okay. It's... B U O Y A Bo Boo yep. Yancey. It started on Yancey Street, or in this case, it ended on Yancey Street. I so, think that I had my O and my Bo U flipped. Bo Yancey. Bo Yancey. Bo, you so Yancey. Bo. Bo Yancey. Okay, so for bubble buoyancy, <laughs> we are going to. Um, Let's see, what kind of extras and flaws do I need on this? It's a limited direction, isn't it? Because they basically yes. go up. Limited direction. And then... Um, uh, uh, well, it's carried by the wind, so wind direction. It'd be based on the direction of the wind. Up and away. Uh, I would say that it, I would say it has the ability to affect objects as well. So I would need to add that. Uh, where's that one? Affects objects. Um, normally resist to fortitude C because I'm pretty sure move object naturally can affect objects. Okay. You're right because it does say move object. Um, And I think I need multi-attack for this as well. 
that sounds right. So multi-attack, limited direction, based on wind. And that seems about good. So that's that. So, well, so that's currently a sustained power. So So we need to change it to not be one. So there's sustained. Is you can keep a sustained effect going by taking a free action each round to do so if you're incapable of taking the necessary action or simply choose not to, the effect ends. However, continuous the next step up lasts as long as you wish without any action on your part, and then permanent, the effect is always active and cannot be deactivated even if you want to. So it sounds like it should be a continuous effect. Yep, I'm trying to find continuous... Right Increased now. duration is what you're looking for. Increased duration. There it is. So, increased duration, multi-attack, um, limited direction, and was there anything else? Um... I'm actually concerned that I might need to take increased mass for all the ones that are going to bubble around people because I just realized that things are going to get real heavy real fast. So I'm going to definitely take... Alice, uh -huh. at, at move object 9, you have 12 tons that this affects. You, you yeah, are a true. super criminal, not a superhero that is buoying the, the Brinks trucks up into the air where you will then ride your own bubble that you ride on top rather than inside, and then hijack them No, there. I'm going to be a superhero because I'm going to buoyancy them away. Bad guys away. Sure, sure. But uh, that's brilliant for a supervillain and probably what they did in the show. I, I no, don't know, they did right? not do that in the show. They, they, they just made to. all the parents bo uh, bubble up because it was the episode about the fact that pa uh, parents are terrible people and all, we need to be a world ruled by kids. Oh, is this the one where they, they went to the uh, Cat Noir's house and had the party? Had the par house party, con yeah. And it was the, the DJ friend that yes. did this? Yes, and turned into a world without parents and yeah. know, bubbles and such, yes. Okay. Like we said, it is not a great show, but it has some interesting no, characters. No, no, no. It is a it is a great show. It is just very formulaic. So. Yes, very, 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 very formulaic. <laughs> Okay, so um, anything else that you can think of a bubble can do? A uh, bubble, I would say, is defensive. Uh, so at this point, though, so the thing about arrays is I'm going to, in general, be able to only use one of these abilities at a time. So if there's anything that I need to be able to have running concurrently, I do not want to have it in the same array. At the moment, I don't see anything that that's the case for. But I think that if, oh shoot, do not do that, kids. <laughs> do not do that at home, kids. Do you need me to send you my POR? <laughs> yes, please. I accidentally hit cancel rather than add power array. <laughs> do not okay. do that at home, kids. Uh, I'm getting so, it to Dropbox here real thank quick. Thank you very um, much. Oops. So... Please ignore uh, the... I just saved the bubble mancer to okay. uh, the exchange folder, Alice. Sure. Please ignore the, the... the. Pay no attention to the character sheet behind the curtain. Yeah, pay no attention to the blank screen that I accidentally... Uh, well, the rendering screen that I just showed. Thank you for bubble mancer. Opening bubble mancer. <laughs> okay. Uh, bubble mancer, you have me uh, short on at least one thing. Oh, uh, what's that? I was trying to keep up. Oh, your move object needs to be ranked up. I see that. So, move object... Needs oh, no, that is rank 9. I don't know why it's showing rank 1. Um, limited direction, wind direction. Okay. Multi-attack, and... Cool. Actually, that works. Now, I was looking at possibly using bubbles on a defensive level. And this one I want to make sure. So I want to create um, energy absorption. I want to... I think they would still be in the same array, is the truth. So let's keep making stuff in the same array. And do not hit cancel, Lala. Um, so we're going to add energy absorption. So when some when I encase someone in a bubble, it will keep them protected from things as it keeps barreling at them. These are very powerful bubbles. 
so let's see here. Um, I am trying to figure out how... Uh, it's been a while since I've had to do energy absorption. You want to walk me through it, Brandon, so I don't have to pull up a book? So energy absorption, sadly, in Mutants and Masterminds is an effect that I never have liked very much. Because of the power level caps that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. and energy absorption does not bring you above those caps. And so basically you're making a character that's saying... This is bad unless somebody shoots me with lightning or something like that. Yeah, that's um, true. I'm going to skip that. Um, so, but if you're trying to make your, your bubbles effectively force fields, yes, so I what should I would do, field. I would make a protection effect. You think I should make a protection array and create a force field and other powers in under that? Uh, I would make it outside of the bubble blower array. I would go ahead and add a power, get... Grab protection. Grab force field, right? Not grab protection. Uh, force field is just a version of protection, I think. Um, yeah, force sure. field. I'll do protection. No, I mean, that's fine. Um, I'll do protection. There... So, I'm going to say... And then you're going to want to come in here and... I am looking for usable on others. Select a secondary reversible. Mm. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call it bubble buffer because it's going to bounce and, you know, it's kind of like turning them into a buffer weapon and it just bounces right off them. So I'm going to call it a bubble buffer. I tend to make power-heavy characters whenever I play Mutants and Masterminds. I rarely play the Brick and m, &M. Okay, so this means that when I cast Protection on someone, I'm going to give them a 9 Toughness. That's pretty darn good. Now this is a side effect of um, being encased in bubbles, right? Yes. So, um, I, I literally have to encase one of our, someone in a bubble in order for them to get that toughness. So, well, what I'm asking is, like, you wouldn't say, hey, Colossus, or, you know, bad pick because he's armored, but hey, Cyclops, come here, and then put him in a bubble because then he would be floating away and at the wind's mercy, right? Or am I misunderstanding? Hmm. I can see doing it either way, to be honest, but, uh... Theoretically, I have control of my bubbles, so theoretically I would say, hey, I'm going to bubble you up and just not make it super big and soup and such, and therefore not make you float away too much. So that's what I'll go with right now, is that I can control this. So I think that you might be coming at this power from the wrong angle, and this is something that Mutants and Masterminds, because of that power level it makes a little awkward. This more sounds like luck control to me. And what I mean by that is the ability to give people hero points on I their agree defense. With that. Yeah, I actually agree with that. And so that would be like one rank of, of luck control. Mm -hmm. um, and it's... Uh, Bubble you blocks. Can, and you can spend one of your hero points or uses of the luck advantage to negate someone else's use. No, not that one. Uh... And I can actually see it used on enemies as well. So you can spend a hero point or use of luck or other on another character's behalf with the normal benefits. That's what you'd be going with because that would allow a reroll. And when you know somebody's got their back to the wall, you say, "Well, I blow bubbles that way." Yeah. And so therefore, I'm providing them defense, right? Yes. So I'm actually going to do that. And for everyone to listen to, I took bestow luck, meaning that I can bestow it onto somebody. I took extra ranks because I want to do it multiple times. I no, have... no, 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 no. Don't do it that way uh, from what I remember. Then again, you were in the power. Oh, Maybe sorry, I'm wrong. no. Sorry, extra uh, extra ranks gives me increases the DC, which is not what I wanted because I also took force reroll, negate luck, and spend on others. Now, why are you grabbing all, all of those? Like, I'm not understanding what Because I blow bubbles in the that. enemy's way and mess their luck up, too. 
so I can do it for us, and I can also blow bubbles and screw up with the enemies. Okay, that seems like it gets far from the power that you described, but and much more to where aces might be treading. Sure. I was thinking that I could basically, you know, direct the bubbles towards my party, or I could basically direct it towards the enemies. But, um, so I will drop the negate luck, uh, but I can definitely spend on others. And, hmm, I'm not going to take force reroll either. That'll be cheaper. And th at that point, I really don't need the extra ranks because I don't need to increase the DC, which will make things a lot cheaper. So bestow luck and spend on others is all I really need. And then can you think of any advantages I would need, Brandon? Or any uh, extras? So spend a hero point or use of luck for someone else to reroll. I'm trying to figure out what spend on other do because bestow luck is literally that same thing. Hmm. Well, bestow luck, I guess, just gives them the hero point. And then um, spend on and, other means I can spend my hero point to you um, or use luck on another character's behalf with the normal benefits. Yeah. So yeah, it sounds like spend on other is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Which, bestow hero point, uh, I don't know, that seems really weird since it's a reaction, action, and a perception range. So it's not like you should have to do this ahead of time. Yeah. That, the way that they're worded. Um, now, if you're like, oh, good luck, and you give people a bunch of luck. But that's not what uh, I'm doing. I'm doing, right now, changing the situation. Yes. So... So what you're going to want is you're going to want to go into your advantages and grab five ranks in luck. Because that'll give me extra hero points to use on it. Yeah, and what you would define those as is uh, that they, they aren't luck, they are your, your bubble protections or whatnot. Yep. And that's, blocks. and that's doing what you were talking about on yes, being able to shield people up. In a different way, in more appropriate for mutants and masterminds, True. Um, because if protection nine, if somebody's defenses are capped already, or they're better than protection nine, that's not really going to help them at all. So this will give them a good chance. Obviously, while inspired by the character from the TV show, I had some I other ideas for this character when I thought about making it. One thing I thought would be cool would be having communication, because I send a you know With I send bubbles? Word, yeah well I send word into a bubble I talk into a bubble and it pops right by their ear, and then it tells and the sound comes out of it and I thought that'd be a cool mm -hmm. little you know superpower so i want to take communication is it no um i guess it'd be a modified yes. telepathy okay it is communication well communication is you communicate over a distance using a medium other than okay. your normal voice so communication now you could claim telepathy but that's much more of an instantaneous yeah so i think that the sense type would be would a auditory be auditory because you're sending your words you mm -hmm. still so um Message in a bubble. Message in a bubble. And description. Um, description is what? Uh, talking. Uh, no. Sending messages. Uh, speak into bubble. Uh, and words expressed when bubbles not bubbles bubbles pop okay. not burst the sure. bubbles don't burst burst sure bubbles burst we are going with the whole bubble thing here okay so at that point um what do the power ranks and communication do it's been a while it increases the range at which it is working okay. is one thing i think that it is going to do um let me flip to communication. Uh, communication. Four points per rank. Um, yeah, rank one is close. Rank two is within a mile. Rank three is statewide. Rank four is worldwide. And rank five is effectively anywhere. Okay. 
Uh, I want to be able to do the sound so that it has an area, but I don't want it to do that all the time. So I guess I would have to do it as two different powers. I want to be. I able don't to remember it. if Mutants and Masterminds is a game that requires you to always use your advantages. Uh, or not. No, yeah, it's been a while. Your modifiers because what not. I'm thinking is it'd be fun to be able to talk to one person with it, but also, oh, and it's also only one direction. I can only send it. I can't receive. So, um, what would the flaw be called here? Um, that's like a limited, it sounds like, um, because I don't see yeah, anything. Add and close. One, um, now, Alice, what area does is, let's say you take two ranks in communication, which lets you do a mile. Mm -hmm. Area means that you sent a bubble to everyone within that mile. Oh. Well, what I That's be not able to what do, you're wanting to do. No. Well, what I want to do is basically have, maybe I should create a sonic attack for this. Because this one is to talk to somebody on the other end. But I also was thinking that it'd be fun if when the bubble burst, it could be like a scream or a boom or a big sound that I'm sending. And that could be like an attack form, an auditory attack form. That might be fun. I'm already at 92 points spent. So, um, so at that point, let's make an attack for that. And for that attack, I am going to go back to Bubble Blower. So are you uh, rank two in communication? Uh, I am rank five in communication. You're able to do it anywhere? Nope, I should go down to rank two. Rank two means speaking to a... Uh, rank two means one mile sending only. That's, one mile sounds pretty long. Now, if you want to go statewide, that's rank three. Statewide sounds or fun. I can blow really far bubble. And for some reason, those bubbles are just fighting their targets and all the wind's blowing. And, <laughs> you know, the wind's blowing all the captured hey, people, hey, but hey, Alice is sending powers. a message. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying that it's funny and people would probably go, uh. Oh, <laughs> uh, what, what the, what? I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Runaway balloon? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to add a new power. So for uh, it's not a flash effect, but I want it to be a some you know the auditory version of a flash effect. So what is that called? Oh, uh, that is an affliction. Ah, that's right. It is an affliction. Everything's going to be an affliction. Yep, it is. So. So this is going back to your bubble blower, right? Yes, I am put. I do want to put it in my bubble blower. So we have another affliction in bubble blower. Do, do, do. Affliction. So in Bubble Blower, we have a um, Bubble Blast. Uh, no, we already have Bubble Blast. Or bubble no, we have boom. Bubble Bullets. We have Bubble. We have Bubble Buoy. We have Bubble Bullets. And we need to hold on. Your Bubble Buoy is spelled as Bubble Boy. So. Yeah, that's what you had it named initially. Yep. Where is my Bubble Buoyancy? That's just move object. Ah, okay. Bubble. Brandon didn't bother trying to figure out how to spell buoyancy. He just was like, yeah. Okay, so bubble no, buoyancy. No, I, I just uh, was doing other things at the time. Okay, cool. Bubble buoyancy. And now we're going to do bubble boom. So affliction for bubble boom. Uh, it could be bubble hullabaloo. No, bubble boom. Boom, 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 <laughs> yay. <laughs> so... We're going to go with dazed. Uh, hold on. We're going. Uh, well, let's see. First of all, dazed. So shouldn't it be um, impaired because you're affecting their yeah, hearing, true. giving them a neck? We're going to impair hear. them. Then We're disable them. Disable them. We're going to incapacitate. Incapacitate them. them. And it's going to be will based because that one definitely would be well. That'd be fortitude based. It's taking that, ow, concussive. Now, are you dazing, stunning them as well? I'm thinking about that. So I need to get additional effects. Um, 
for the extra people. condition yeah. right at the top. I'm trying to figure out what the. Uh, I'm trying to figure out something. Should we do progressive? Hmm. The more that you hit them, the worse things get for them. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'm going to take extra condition and progressive on this one. So. Impaired and dazed. And then disabled and stunned. stunned. Incapacitated, unaware. Unaware. Yep. And we're going to make it progressive. Awesome. Bubble boom. And we're going to bring this up to rank nine. Now, I, I have a question. Going with that theory, can you do area effect concealment to sound by bundling it into a bubble? Ooh, that would be fun. Yes, I think I could. I think I could. I don't think that would go into the bubble blower array, though. No. I think that we do a new power, and we do concealment. I like to do weird characters. Concealment. Okay. But, you know, we had, a fa we had a straightforward brick, and now we get to have one of my weird characters on the build. Um, so, bubble... Um, Bubble of silence. Bubble of silence. Okay. So. Concealment. We're going to conceal sound. Yes, so, so all do... oral senses. Huh? What? All oral senses. Yeah, all oral senses. Add and close. And then we're going to... Now, you can affect others on it, right? Yes, affect others. And we're going to be increased range on this. Why increased be range? Because I need to be able to target an area that's nearby. And I believe that concealment requires it to be ground zero. Well, yeah, but wouldn't that be like, because that's where you're blowing your bubble up, right? Um, and so your bubble is soaking the sound. That's true. And so it would be like an area burst around you so, of yeah. so area, silence sure. getting So we can up. do area. Area burst. And I believe area burst 30 feet seems pretty big. Yeah. That you're, you should be able to bind all that up. And, mm -hmm. and then send it away. Um, yeah, so that sounds like all I need for that. So, Bubble of Silence. Concealment, uh, why is it saying Concealment Zero? It should not be Concealment Zero. I do not know. It is treating it like it is the two ranks that it is, but... Yeah. Um. I don't know. Uh, but I, it's not supposed to be Concealment Zero. Oh, well, we'll figure it out later. We can move on right now. Um, so right now, I have spent 95 of 150 points. I have spent 59 of them on my powers. I think that that's a pretty good list of bubble powers. What do you think, Brandon? Oh, I think that's an excellent list. Let's not shortchange these bubble powers. <laughs> I, I think this is going to be a fun character. I want to play Bubbles now. now by the way, the character's um, name is Bubbles. Not the Bubble Mancer. No, um, not the Bubble as, Mancer, not Bubbler. Bubbles. I'm Bubbles. As something uh, to possibly save you a few points, you could take that concealment and make it uh, an a extra effect of the message in a bottle. Because you can't bind a message and take all the sound at the same time. You could, however, take all the sound and then message that over to somebody. Nah, I think which I'm good with that. you... You are the world's worst alarm clock. <laughs> okay, guys, everybody, everybody scream, everybody scream, and then you pop the bubble on the outside of somebody's okay, window. Okay, sure. So let's let's <clears> delete <throat> that, and let's make uh, it. A... You, th you still there? Yep, I'm okay. still here. So let's delete, uh, let's do let's actually make that an a side effect of that. 
Well, so it's going to be um, go back in a message in a bottle and then add a, an array power or whatever it's called. Add alternate so. effect, right? Yeah, it's add yes. alternate effect, and then we're going to add concealment. And then in concealment, we go bubble of silence. And then we add powers, all oral senses, add and close. And then we add uh, area burst, add that. And then we add, other than the area burst, what were we doing? Um, Affects others. Affects others, thank you. The one point per, not the zero points per. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one point per rank. Okay. And then I'm going to delete the other one, and we're good. Cool. Now, do you, um, well, this is an excellent set of bubble powers. Are your defenses simply because you're fast and you roll with a punch well, or do you have any power-based defense? Mm. Well, the idea was do that you, I was going to make Do you have a defenses. bubble wrap? Yeah, I was thinking about doing like a bubble, you know, bubble armor, bubble wrap. So I would, so uh, let's make some defenses for me, which means we're going to do a new array. Well, it's just going to be one, isn't it? Do, do you need an array? Mm. Well, let's see. I guess it's just one power. So um, we're going to do protection. Uh, force field, let's do at this point. Sure, let's do force field. Force field. Bubble wrap. Oh my gosh, I totally need to play this character. This is going to be fun. And this definitely does not seem like your, you know, your bubble wrap would be the toughest thing, but, you know, that probably a good amount of your hardiness in battle might be based on it. So, like, a bubble wrap of four? Sure. Bubble wrap of four sounds good. And then... What else can I do with it? Um... I'm going to say the bubble wrap is impervious. So what impervious is going to do is make you immune to damage one and damage two effects while you're inside your bubble wrap. Oh, yeah, wrap. because I'm only, because it's so low. Yeah, it's only four. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm good with what it is at bubble four. Maybe we'll move it up later. We'll see. So at this point, we need to look at the fact that I am not survivable because I have no defenses other than that. So we need to. You also have no skills and no advantages. Yes. Yeah, so let's go to skills. Uh, actually, let's go to advantages next because that would work better for me. So advantages first. So I'm seeing you've got 58 points left. Am I accurate? Yes. Awesome. Most of my points went into powers. So let's see, what do you think we should have here? Um, All out attack is a great ranged attacker um, kind of thing because yeah, you just kind of set your stance and. Uh, yep. <clears throat> um, I'm thinking, as I recall, I can do the improved grab and improved hold with my ranged attacks if I've got afflictions that matter for it, right? Um, Those are pretty much melee, I thought. Okay, it's been, you know. But if you want to double check that, that'd be great. Um, let's see here. Power attack doesn't work for ranged, so... Yes, it does. Oh, it does? Okay. Yep. Cool. The, you oh. can see that the main character Alice has played was a real beat stick in uh, Mutants and Masterminds in the past. <laughs> uh, precise attack I'm going to take. And let's see here. I'm going to take setup and I'm going to take teamwork. So your precise attack is that ranged concealment and ranged cover because your bubbles just kind of envelop those anyways? Yes. So I went and took a uh, precise attack all. Uh, do you need it on close? Why, why are you, when you close. Yeah, I'll punching take somebody? Yeah. So I will go and just take precise ranged and precise close. Okay, great. Now my question here, 
did you make your own bubble blower bubbles? Yes. Yes, I did. Are you a gadgeteer? I think a gadgeteer would be super fun. Oh my gosh, this is uh, turning into a bubble gnome. <laughs> so. I think that is going to, I think it's artificer these days, right? That's magic, no, that's so magic. I'm looking for it. Um, so you said you took teamwork and setup? Yes, I took teamwork and setup. I like to be good at improving other people or improving the group because uh, sometimes one person just trying to beat stick it out. If everything's a nail, uh, if everything uh, looks like, you know, a nail, everything's a hammer or whatever that phrase is, I forget. Do you have inventor? That's that's what it's going to be. That's not what it's called. Yes, inventor. inventor. I am totally an inventor. Sounds awesome. Okay. So, um. Let's see. Am I really gonna? So this means I'm gonna either have to take an interaction skill or. Actually, yeah. I think setup two would be good. That'll let me transfer it to two people. And let me take ultimate effort. Um, actually, extraordinary effort. That sounds good. I think what, you, what you're describing or what you've been talking about is probably more teamwork than setup based yeah, on... Yeah, I think, I think teamwork is good. Setup, I'm going to drop setup. Uh, I'm at 98 points spent of 150. I have 50. I missed left. something then. Oh, did you grab power attack, didn't you? I grab power attack, yes. Okay. I'll add attack, inventor, power attack, precise attack, range, concealment, precise attack, range, cover, and teamwork, and I've got the luck five from the power. That's why that's in the panel. So, Alice, I want to really quick go back to bubble wrap. Um, open sure. that up. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's add new uh, advantages. And I have a question. Well, you're within your bubble wrap. Do you have evasion? Oh, that sounds... Yes, yes, I should. That's very the true. Two ranks of it or just the one? Uh, probably two ranks. I also think I would be very hard to grab. So, um... I think that... I mean, I think that my escape checks and such like that would be also easier because, it, you know, you, the bubble would just slip out of somebody's grasp. So let me see about how we would do that. Um, what would be the escape artist thing called these days? Um, I think that would more be maybe based on a skill while you're using this. Sure. Um, I'm going through and just trying to see if I see anything. So it would be that I have skill mastery while I'm in it? Skill mastery... Or, huh. Skill mastery for acrobatics? Yeah, skill mastery acrobatics. Sounds good. Which just allows you to take 10 no matter what. And so since acrobatics covers balancing, maneuvering, standing, and tumbling, standing up from prone, while you're in a bubble, you can just kind of bounce back to standing. Mm -hmm. you, you can, you know, bounce around the ba battlefield without a problem. You can balance because you weigh almost nothing as you're balancing yep. on a bubble and uh, making acrobatic maneuvers. So, I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, am I attractive when I'm in a bubble? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Got to insert some humor in here, guys. Got to insert a little humor. Uh, am I inspiring when I'm in a bubble wrap? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to meeting Rag's new teammate. Oh, you think this is Ragnarok's new teammate? Who's GMing Heck yes. then? I don't care. Oh my god! Crime doesn't need a GM. Crime happens. Okay. So. We were going to go over to skills yes, and waste some skills. of your points there. Yes, I need acrobatics. I'm going to put 10 ranks in acrobatics. So you're a plus 12 total? Yes. You're a very acrobatic individual. I think I am. Um, I will bo not bother with close combat. I will... Let's see. Ranged... Oh, wow. You had a high presence earlier. When you first uh, started on this. Yeah. Mm. 
So perception, I think I would be decent at. Uh, so I'm going to put... I'm going to put four ranks into perception, giving me an eight. That's a pretty good perception. And I'm bubbly, so I'm going to put eight into persuasion. So I'm a 16, because I'm bubbly. Alice, uh -huh. why is uh, why am I going to superpowers? And because she didn't have a power, she found a gun. Shh. Um... Can can the first can can being bubbly intimidate? I'm wondering. <laughs> so, quick question on Jitsi: If uh, you have frozen, is there a way that I can refresh you other than dropping and coming back? Um, no, not that I know of, but I'm not frozen. You're right back. End. Okay. Do do do, and I'm getting back to work. I am going to welcome back something else. You are something else. That's what you told me. I told you to do it. So, yes, okay. Oh, Brandon, oh. the Mr. Literal for everyone. That's what I should introduce you as from now on. Mr. Literal. Mr. Cellophane. Okay. I am going to take... Hmm, maybe I should use... Maybe maybe my bubbles help me investigate. Hmm. Maybe you need uh, technology to manipulate your bubble machine. Yes. I since think you have I'm an inventor. inventor. Yes, since I'm inventor, I am going to take 12 ranks in technology. At that point, you have 32 left, uh, and did you spend on ranged combat yet? No, I have not. Ranged combat. Uh, what am I maxing out on? I forget. Um, 11. 11, okay. So, so maybe nine. grab... Well... I've, I've got a question. Are you accurate with things other than your bubble blower? Probably not. So I will go with... Okay, so I nine will... ranks. Or... I'll go yes, plus... Yes, nine ranks. Plus nine, you mean. Uh, plus 11 is where you want to get, okay. because you are an accuracy-shifted character. I know, once again, sure. a foreign concept to you of being an accuracy-shifted character. Shh. Well, I mean... MM also was an accuracy shifted character, and she's my primary one. MM lies. She turned the the <laughs> throne room of the Frost Giants into a carousel. A carousel. <laughs> that is not accuracy <laughs> shifted. That is like reality adjacent. Character. Fine, 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 fine. I just don't really. Like. Okay. So. So. Do you want one point in stealth because you've got a point left to spend uh, yeah, on, on skills? Mm -hmm. And that way you're, you know, you can conceal sound with by making bubbles of noise. Yep. But you at least might not get noticed. Yep. All right. So find some defenses. In advantages, I did notice that you did not uh, look at defensive role, I think is what it is. Oh, defensive role is pretty good. And defensive role, what it, it is, it does the exact same thing as toughness, but you have to be aware of something to really benefit from it, and, and you're rolling with the bubble. punches. Rolling in my bubble. Okay. So how many ranks in defensive role are you looking at? Mm, let's go with four. Yeah, four sounds good. Four. And all right, so you are even on toughness. You are at a ten total toughness. You have two from your natural stamina, four from being in bubble wrap, and four because you just kind of roll with it. Mm -hmm. Which goes with being a very good acrobat. Acrobat. Now I need to buy some will save here. Uh, you might want some dodge and some parry. Yeah. So. Let me buy some will. I'm going to buy some dodge. Um, and some parry. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Let's see. I don't remember where my caps are right now. So I guess it'll tell me if I start capping. Yeah, you'll get the, you know, I'm they'll start moving so on. But... I'm going to go with dodge um dodge is capped at 10 
And then, you know, I'm not going with worrying about being absolutely uh, capped on things, personally. So, I'm going to be better at parrying, I feel, than I am at fortitude, because parrying, again, it's... Those are not trade-offs. Oh, that's true. Dodge, dodge and parry are trade-offs. Yeah, dodge and parry or, are trade-offs. Uh, sorry. Dodge and parry, trade off with toughness. With toughness. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to go with 10, 7, 6, 10, 8. Which at that point should have me maxed on my points. 150. I show 150 on my end too, by all Fantastic. means. I think that getting a little improved initiative or something for you, so that way you can be the fastest bubble in the West uh, at some point. Sure. Uh, I'm going to drop but my... Then... I, I wasn't trying to make you do it right now. That's, yeah, you know, maybe with where experience, experience go. Yes. So, for motivation, I'm going to go with doing good. Actually, hmm. I don't know. I think that this might, this character might be a little, um... Thrills or recognition? Yeah. I think I'll go with recognition. Um, that, uh, I forgot the character's name right now. Uh, Time Traveler... Booster, booster gold. gold. There we go. A little booster goldish on the fact that I want recognition. That's my motivation. And quirk, I am bubbly. That is definitely a noticeable quirk about her personality. She is very bubbly. I don't know that I can even play that bubbly. We'll see. We'll try. Um, you half orc that bubbly, Alice. <laughs> we'll see about that. Okay. Quirk is bubbly. And that's my two right now. You know, if I actually am fleshing this out and playing this, I will definitely come up with more. But that's the character. And Alice, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What's their favorite drink? The, that would be soda. Soda pop. Uh, not bubble tea. Not boba. No. No, no, not boba. <laughs> not boba. So... For those who don't know, since we were using Hero Labs tonight, this is how the PDF would export if I chose to export it as a PDF. Oops, I hit too many pages forward. But this exports a very nice character sheet for everyone. And we can post that up in Discord pretty easily. Yes, we can. For those for those of you that follow with us, uh, we can post up the finished character uh, character sheets exported. So make sure that you stop in on our Discord to check it out. And What's the link there, Alice? Oh, yes. The link for our Discord is discord.me slash bwk. And you can also find us on Facebook at facebook slash babies with knives. And obviously you can find us here. You can also find in our banner up on YouTube while you're watching this uh, all our links for Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So... And uh, links for all this stuff and uh, is going to be in the notes, I think. And please make certain you come and subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, follow us on Facebook. Yep. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Good night. Adios, all.